October 4th, me and Ted are back in here at the buck nest today. Logan and I came in here yesterday in the hot weather and all the wind and did some scouting in this creek and we didn't see any sign of hunting pressure in here, which is completely different than last year's situation. We came in here during the first week last year and there was boot tracks all through this creek and we're using this creek to get in there. Our wind, according to the weatherman right now, is actually blowing straight at the deer, but I'm dropping milkweed and it's staying down in this creek. It's just following it, just like the water is. And I'm hoping that our scent will stay down in this creek with us as we move around those bucks in order to get set up. So right now I'm looking at fresh buck tracks. I mean, it rained last night and it looks like there's been bucks in here just in the last, you know, 24 hours, obviously. So here's hoping that they're back in the buck nest this evening. I haven't found the sign that I was hoping for. However, they're still here. I just found a great big scrape up there that was just made probably this morning. There's fresh buck tracks in it. However, I know how this looked a few years ago whenever we deemed it the buck nest when that one night Zach and I saw 12 different bucks in this one bedding area. And the trails and the sign does not look near as heavy as it did then. With that said, I still think there's a buck or two in there. Ted and I are gonna sit it. I just don't know exactly where. I just ranged this tree right here and it's 25 yards to that scrape. And you'll notice I didn't go up any further past that because I don't wanna leave my ground scent past that point. I wanna make sure that I can shoot to the last spot that I stood. That scrape don't lie though. That's fresh we're gonna sit over top of that. I just tried to pick a tree here. That was the tree that we used to sit in. That one there is much more open, but we got a lot better shooting opportunities out of it. As long as we can get the straps around the base of the dead gum tree, I don't know if we can. It's pretty big. All right, here we go. Got everything packed up and ready to go. Aaron and Ted are back in the buck nest right now and that's probably oh three quarters of a mile away from where I'm at. I'm actually going to go in and hunt the first field here. You can see a long ways into some really good bedding cover. Got corn that's being cut as we speak. Beautiful evening for early October. I'm excited to see how it pans out for everybody. It's just now five o'clock. Took me and Ted forever to get up in this old willow tree. I got about halfway up the tree and Ted couldn't film it, but a coon came running right out of this little hole. <laughs> Ran straight up the tree above me. Anyway, we're set up. We got a fresh scrape right down here over my shoulder, about 24 yards away. Most of the buck nest bedding is back behind me. We got a northeast wind that's taking our scent back down here to the creek that we walked in on. We bumped two small bucks on the way in. I don't know if Ted managed to get any footage of them or not but they were in the satellite bedding just off to the side of the primary bedding, which is behind me. Usually if there's deer in the satellite bedding, that means that there's something older and bigger in the primary stuff. That's at least what I'm hoping on. Cold front just came through. I would expect them to be up and moving within the next hour, hour and a half. Greg is only about a half a mile from us to the north. He's overlooking another one of these brushy bottoms like this because there's several of them scattered down through here on the public land. And as you can tell over my shoulder here, you can see that big timber. That's where most of these bucks were at last year when all the acorns were dropping on a heavy acorn year. That timber's loaded with oaks and the deer get scattered throughout. It's a giant block of timber. But on a year when there's not as many acorns like this year, they move back down into these creek bottoms. 
Oh, there's a buck. Good buck. Right here. Right here. Don't move. He just stood up. Oh, my. Big one. Big one. Big one. Don't move. Don't move. He just stood up. Yes. But he doesn't know we're here. It's a huge buck. Okay. Slowly turn. Whoa, look easy. He's in 100 yards. Okay. He's not looking. Right over there across the field in the shadows. Zoom to him nice and slow. Holy cow. You got him. Still in the same spot. Dead. You're gonna have to move that arm or I can't shoot. I'm gonna have to hide behind this tree real good. up the other side. How in the world? I mean, look at that. Oh my, I'm talking five yards. Five more, y five more yards. It's five o'clock. Just an absolute. 
absolute brute. Absolute brute. Oh. How did he? It must have just swirled in that moment. Because I can I can feel it, yes, I can feel it swirling every once in a while through these trees behind us. If you're here on the north or northwest, that works. And he doesn't get you. It started at north, northeast this morning, and it's supposed to turn and move to east, northeast this evening, which is blowing straight behind the camera right now. Right down this edge. I just dropped milkweed and it sucked right down there. That's how close you set up on these mature bucks. We're talking about just off wind all the time. With folks, they're always asking about what a just off wind means. You're set up for the buck to be in the spot. They're gonna bed out here in this buck nest on a northerly wind of some kind. And today it was just off. I mean, we walked. The creek is right over there. Ted just filmed that buck bound through the creek on the way out. Did you film him? Mm -hmm. Could you see him leaving? That creek is the one we walked in on. And like I like I was hoping our scent must have stayed down in that creek because he didn't he obviously didn't get us on the way in. But he stood up and he's coming right at the tree. Oh my gosh. Five more yards and he's in the wide open right there. That's the thing. If they just get even the slightest width, like that big nine pointer last year that came by me and Brody just the slightest whiff and he's gone. Old mature buck like that, he's not gonna mess around. I mean, we ain't done yet. It's five o'clock and we're in the nest. That's not even the best bedding location. Like the best one is further out there. We knew they were back in here just from looking at the tracks in the creek. He's actually set up in the satellite bedding though. Like I said, the main bedding is out there off the willow. But that's a brood of a deer. Like he's, yeah. Old and big. That's just everything you ever want right there. They move like a snail coming across there. And that's why. So that they rely on that nose so much. I mean, that wind current is not consistent right here. Every once in a while it's dipping back in there and blowing out in the corner of this field. Well, hey, like I said, it's, it's 515. We just about killed a mature buck, so... We better start glassing because chances are really good that there's another shooter around this field. now six o'clock and we're pretty much covered up we've had two more little bucks stand up out there in the middle of this field and then work down through the waterway past us and they're in the this other bedding area to the southeast of us right now they're only about 35 yards away so i'm not going to talk real loud but i'm staring out there at that spot where that deer's bedded and it's 92 yards to the tree that he was laying under there's nothing in between him and us but grass and me and Ted are probably 15 feet up in this tree, and we walked just 20 steps on the other side of that deer down the creek. So, I mean, I just wanted to let y'all know how high up we are and how close we got to that deer while he was in his bed. Just goes to show you, if you're in the bedding area with him, you got a chance, because that thing was on his feet two and a half hours before the illegal. We got other bucks stirring around the bedding area right now. 
can hear the, all these blue jays going nuts around us. It's because it, most of the deer are up. <laughs> Apparently so is the guy that's sighting his gun too. Just heard something cough. Buck just stood up. Got a nice buck that stood up about 60 yards. Probably a borderline shooter. If he walks right under the tree and gives me a point blank shot, I'd be real tempted to take it. Somebody's slinging a lot of lead tonight. Never ceases to amaze me how close you can get to bedded deer and get a stand set up if you have the right conditions, you know, just breezy enough. Just range the spot where that buck stood up and it said 55 yards. You watched him for several minutes and now I believe he has bedded back down. I lost track of him. Actually, I know he's still there because I just heard him cough again. If I had my longbow with me, it would be a definite shooter, but I decided not to bring it tonight just because I'm self-filming and I don't want to try to shoot my first deer with a longbow. Self-filming because there's a lot of stress that's involved with that. And I want to make sure when I eventually do get a shot with it, I'm fully concentrated on what I'm doing. Every time I feel my phone buzz, I keep waiting for the text from Zach or Luke or Aaron saying that they knocked one down. So far, it's been heartbreak for Aaron. I'm kind of hanging in limbo right now, seeing what this buck is going to do. Aaron says, seen five bucks so far. Got another shooter out here across the field in front of us. The bucks are back in here. It sounds like they're stacked farther back in where Aaron's at. Not too bad. I guess he's got a 10 point brain. No, there's two of them. There's two of them. See him? I think one of them is a pretty good one. Greg said he just had a shooter stand up 50 yards from him. I'm thinking about getting down and going over there. The problem is, is that creek will not be quiet now. Like they're going to hear us in that creek. It's entirely possible they walk right down here where those little bucks just went.
crazy how much faster these younger bucks move than the old ones. That's probably a three-year-old buck, I'm assuming. And he made pretty good time across that field. Ted was filming him at about 200 yards 20 minutes ago. And he made it all the way over here. He walked through my opening at 35 yards. I may shoot one at 35, but all the conditions have got to be perfect. Because they're going to move. I mean, there's just no doubt in my mind that deer's going to move. Oh, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Crazy night, though, so far. Sounds like Greg is in them, too, just right up the river from us. Well, I'm wrapping up the evening here. Got two does and a fawn about 100 yards away from me. They're working their way out to the fields right now. And I lost track of that buck for about the last hour. And I wondered if he had slipped away. But just a minute ago, I could hear him cough again. He's bedded. He's been bedded. Still at about 55, 60 yards away. Haven't got the text or call from anybody else that they shot one. So, sounds like another heartbreaker for Aaron tonight. Well, we got about five minutes of shooting light left. Ended up seeing five bucks. Two real big ones and then one borderline shooter. That 10 pointer that came right through the gap here was at 35 yards. And I know that I can hit my spot at that distance, but as calm as it is at that range, the deer's gonna move for sure. The problem is we have no idea how much he can move. So we let him walk through the opening right there. I'm anxious to find out what all Greg saw and Zach saw and Luke saw tonight because we had a whole bunch of guys in the woods. I was thinking somebody would have shot one this evening, but haven't got any texts yet or calls. Can't complain for the second set in Iowa. We've sure seen a lot of bucks so far, haven't we, Dad? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and start climbing down, try to do it as quiet as we can. The good thing with our access in here is that we walked in on that creek, and we were only up on dry land for about 40 yards, so we are not leaving a lot of scent in here. And that really big buck that was all the way across the field from us has not shown up yet, so... Ideally, I'd like to get out of here real quiet, try not to spook him, then maybe somebody else can come back in here the next few days and get a crack. So you guys didn't see any bucks, Jay? We saw a nice spike buck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Booner spike. What about you guys? That's awesome for that spot. So there's garlic butter, regular butter, or like dipping oil. And I'll cut you guys up some apples. You didn't get to be the hero Try tonight. Try a latte okay. if anybody wants that. Not today. Ha <laughs> 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 You're close though. Break. Oh, I mean, right down the pipe. 30 yards. Couldn't Coming drive right at the tree and just... Gone. Saw ya? No, smells. Drop a milkweed the year, and we're watching milkweed float across the field from us like this. He's coming like this. Northeast wind playing perfect out of that tree. Did you guys shower oh. before you went? No. <laughs> <laughs> a, couple, a couple years ago, I hunted the same tree though on the Northwest and I had a buck get up out of the same bed that this one got out of and come right underneath, right down the pipe where he was headed. Early in the night? The, I almost shot this buck at five o'clock. And I was doing my opening interview, and it's going to be some of the funniest photos <laughs> that you've seen. Because I'm sitting there talking to the camera, and I, I was like, I hope we see something tonight. And I go like this, I'm like, ta -ta 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 -ta. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just right there, 90 yards, two two-year-olds and then a three-year-old that like came by us at 35 yards. And I know he was going to shoot him, and I was thinking about shooting him. And if he would have turned and came underneath the tree, he might have tree and all of a sudden I kind of felt something inside the tree and I looked up and he just right there right above my head and looked down at me and then took off up the tree. Yeah this one's like and then down the tree and through the tree. The thing tree. is is like this guy saw me and he, and he spooked and he ran up the tree. The problem is is there's just one huge limb that, that goes out. Like there's nothing else. There's nowhere to go. No, I never saw him jump. Just hung out up there. I think he just went up there and stayed up there. Oh, really? Flanked him. Flanked you. And all of a sudden it was just like, <laughs> same exact oh, route, awesome. just like right at me. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. That's good stuff. Oh, there's a good one. Just stood up. Oh, my big one, big one, big one. <laughs> <laughs> 
gonna come right to Which way is he gonna go, Ted? On a chance, or? Oh, yeah, like, oh, good job. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up that fish right now. Is it scaled in right now? No. Ooh! Is that I, don't like that? I don't think so. I'm gonna get out of here. Ouch.